ceremony signifies the continuation of the depot's relationship with the surrounding community and the Army's commitment to the Net Zero Initiative. This cooperative partnership identifies SIAD as an organization that is energy efficient and environmentally conscious. I would, I would now like to introduce our first speaker for today's ceremony, the commander of Sierra Army Depot, Lieutenant Colonel Benjamin Johnson. So, good morning and welcome here to Sierra Army Depot. The weather couldn't be much better, especially in the shade. <laughs> um, so we were trying to figure out how to get power out here to power the microphone and the amps and all that. And uh, then somebody realized we had a 2.5 megawatt <laughs> power generation plant behind us. So turns out there's a 110 plug back there. <laughs> uh, so we broke ground on this back in May. And I issued a challenge to Plumas Sierra Rural Electric Cooperative to finish ahead of the contract completion date. Um, if you pay close attention to the fancy sign over here, you'll see that that's uh, the 15th of November. So y'all beat that deadline by a large margin. The solar array is producing power by late September, in fact. So great work. Uh, the solar power project demonstrates the Army Depot, the Tank Automotive, uh, Automotive Armament Command, and the Army's commitment to the Department of Defense net zero energy policy. We strive to be stewards of our environment, and this project is part of our commitment to that goal. So thanks to our partners in the project, Plumas Sierra, I'm not going to say the rest because that's a mouthful. You know who I'm talking about. Uh, SoCor Energy. So Mr. Bob Marshall and Mr. Eric uh, Lucebring, thank you for being here today. Thank you to the Lassen County representatives who came out, Mr. Tom Hammond and Mr. Tony Shaw. So you both have put in some hard work to make this a reality. It took a few years, but here we are. I'd like to congratulate uh, several of our staff members this year. Mr. Walt Zinko. Didn't see Walt. Is he on? Oh, there's Walt. Um, our Department of Public Works Chief. And then Mr. John Meeks and Ms. Tammy Gage. Where are they? Go ahead and raise your hands. They're our contracting office. We did a lot of the hard work here. And then Mr. Patrick Rothbauer, Garrison Manager. Go ahead, Reed. There he is. So uh, I want to also give a special thanks to Mr. Scott Welch from Plumas Sierra, who continuously impresses me with his persistence and acumen in explaining electrical project nuances to amateurs. So, <laughs> very good. And he also reminds me of Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs, so that's pretty good. Cool. Uh, so thanks for being here today and supporting Sierra Army Depot. We're committed like you to make Sierra, Herlong, and Lassen County, a great place to live and work, pride and excellence, and Army strong. I'd like to introduce the next guest speaker, Mr. Bob Marshall, General Manager of Plumas Sierra Regional Electric Cooperative. It's nice and warm by this thing. This is great. Um, thank you. I'm so glad to be here. It's been a, a, quite a project. Um, those of you who know me well know I'm a sort of massive history buff, and um, looking back and, and really looking at the logistics of this, there's a, a saying, amateurs worry about tactics, professionals worry about logistics. And, you know, one of my favorite study in the Civil War, one of the great uh, interesting areas is after the, the disaster at Chickamauga, uh, Ulysses S. Grant told George Thomas, to hold Chattanooga, just hold it. And um, Thomas was one of the great defensive generals ever for the US Army, and he simply announced, we'll hold it till we starve. And then they, Grant did it, went all out to bring in what became known as the cracker line to get food in there. And once that army had been fed, that same army is the army that boiled up over Missionary Ridge to crack the Confederates, and then that became the march towards Atlanta. TACOM is the infrastructure and supply for the Army. And Plumas Sierra Electric and Plumas Sierra Telecom are very proud to be the infrastructure for Sierra Army Depot. We take our job seriously. Uh, the Board of Directors has approved millions upon millions of improvements on the rural electric system to, to improve the quality of power both to all of our members but to the base. We are on day five of the campfire. Plumas Sierra 
has been without its main power supply for 130 hours. And it's um, a little freaky that every morning uh, Jason and the gang are staring and their eyeballs burn uh, just watching the voltage as it creeps up. And I've, we're so happy to say that the moment, several days now, the moment the sun has hit these panels, the voltage has stabilized. It's, you know, we're at the, we're at the um, ribbon cutting, and this has already contributed to system stability and system support, which is awesome. Um, project like this takes, takes a lot of things. It takes foresight. It takes uh, cooperation amongst us. It takes persistence. And then also, you've got to learn. It was a long project. Um, you know, it, Walt Zinko and I leg wrestled for quite a while um, over various puzzle pieces. Uh, Steve Johnson was also involved. We had discussion after discussion, uh, used the phrase cost of service contract a few hundred times. Um, I gotta say, and Paul Schwab is here from NREL, and NREL did a great National Renewable Energy Labs. Um, my board is on me a lot for acronyms, Bob. Spell what the word, the acronyms mean. Um, NREL came out and played a great job as an honest broker of here's how we get this job done. Here's how we protect Paloma Sierra. Here's how we protect the Army. So NREL came in and, and helped make this happen. Um, as, as, we're, as we start down this path, we go out to bid. Um, we, we, we brought in NRTC, National Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, who brought in, who had struck a national deal with SOCOR, and so they came into this. At one point in time, the leading bidder went bankrupt, Sun Edison. So we went through a lot of changes in this. We dealt with Army Corps. We kept at it, um, worked through the contracts, and really what made this happen was persistence. Plumas Sierra isn't the biggest utility, nor the richest. Um, what we are is persistent. What we are is relentless. We're pretty proud of that. Um, so it has, and I got to say again, Scott Welsh has done an absolutely great job of dogging this through. It's, um, you know, he doesn't give up on stuff, and he keeps working it through until it's done. Again, we look forward in the future for working more on resiliency, for the, um, both on generation, on energy storage. We're very glad that both uh, NRTC and NGR, um, SOCOR, now NG, are working on providing us solutions uh, for storage. So with that, this is a, a great day. I'm so glad we got it done. I'm so glad it's working and it contributed when we needed it most. And thank you so much. Our next guest speaker is Mr. Eric Lucebrink, Senior Vice President of Development of NG Distributed Solar. Thank you very much. And uh, first of all, we're thrilled to be out here. I remember coming out in, I think it was April time frame, and uh, we did our, um, our groundbreaking with the shovels. I think uh, we look forward to this day, and we're really pleased that we uh, we're here to celebrate. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Lieutenant Colonel Johnson uh, and the Army, Sierra Army Depot. Really appreciate you hosting this project. I'd like to thank Pluma Sierra, Bob Marshall, and his whole team. Done a fantastic job pulling all of this together. We'd like to thank our partners, NRTC. Uh, NG has a partnership with NRTC that is uh, nationwide, and this is one of about 24 different projects that we've done with co-ops around the nation, uh, probably 15 different co-ops as well. Um, I'll say that in terms of NG, Bob, Bob mentioned, uh, uh, gave us a little history lesson. I will say that this project doesn't go quite far, that far back, but it does go quite a ways. We started this effort in 2014, and I know Pluma Sierra started uh, before that, but we started in 2014 with the process of assessing the site and start the initial design of the project. We went through a number of different iterations, finally coming to, uh, to the design and contracting for this site in about uh, January of 2018, and, and having that now constructed is fantastic. During that time, SOCOR was acquired by NG, and for those of you not familiar with NG, it's actually the largest uh, independent power producer in the world. 
It has over 90 gigawatts of generation worldwide, uh, and it has about 24 gigawatts of gener uh, renewable generation worldwide, and it is keenly focused on renewable generation projects such as these. The guiding principles of, of NG are very consistent with what we're doing here with Pluma Sierra and the Sierra Army Depot, and that is decarbonized, decentralized, and digitized. So we hope that with projects like these, we can continue to build on our renewable portfolio uh, over worldwide. I also have my colleague here, and I don't know where he went. Come on up, Brandon. I wanted to have Brandon share a few details about the project that Brandon was the project manager and worked uh, over the course of the last six months helping to build this. So for you, for those of you with a few questions, I think Brandon can explain some of the, some of the ins and outs of the project itself. Brandon? Thanks, Eric. Um, so before I left, my wife said, if you get nervous in front of all these people, just pretend they're all wearing a solar panel. <laughs> and that's what I do all day, so you guys are shining. Um, I'd like to reiterate the thanks uh, that everybody has said before me, and I'd also like to point out um, that while we manage the project, we have installation partners, uh, namely Barry Construction, uh, Dean and his wife, Rachel, are here today, so thank you. And there were other contractors involved as well, so truly a team effort. Um, briefly, this facility has uh, single access tractors, they're actually going very slowly right behind me. There's 108 individual tractors. Um, and if you stand in the middle of one of these rows, there's a small solar panel that actually powers each row. So they're self-powered, uh, which is awesome. They don't draw energy from the grid as they track throughout the day. There are uh, 10,080 72 cell solar panels. Um, Eric can tell, me how, tell you how many uh, cells that is. Um, <laughs> There are 16 inverters, excuse me, 20 inverters, uh, each about 125 kilowatts, and the whole facility is two and a half megawatts, as you've heard. So, yeah, it's a great effort. Um, we're very happy to be here, and uh, it's an honor to be able to build a facility or participate in it, while other people did. So, thank you. Thank you. Our next guest speaker is Mr. Brad Stever, Vice President of National Rural Telecommunications Council. Thank you, everyone. This is a great project. NRTC, National Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, has roughly 1,500 members in 48 states. Our job is to help rural America, to help our members with technology solutions. And this is a, a great example of uh, a new project, a state-of-the-art project in rural America. As new as this is, it's relying on technology that has been around for a while and has been developed so that it is uh, financially competitive and provides a, a much better solution than any other similar solution. According to Bloomberg, back in 79, uh, cells just like this were about a, uh, $76 a watt. And cells are now available for less than 50 cents a watt. The entire project here was built for under $2 a watt, including all of the inverters and related equipment. And that's a fantastic improvement in the overall economics. The next phase, or the next part of the strategy, is going to be storage. And we're seeing some of the same uh, reductions in costs of storage uh, that are following, following the same price curve that solar has. According to uh, McKinsey, battery prices were $2,100 a kilowatt hour as short as 10 years ago, and now they are less than $500 a kilowatt hour. And we're seeing the same price reductions in uh, wind as well. You know, wind has a high upfront cost with crane mobilizations and other expenses, so wind isn't typically viable until about a 100 megawatt project. But now developers like NG are creating strategies to sell uh, 10 megawatt uh, slices of larger projects. So these are all exciting times in renewable energy. Uh, it, uh, Fortune said if you add all of these uh, technologies together, the people that are working on the technologies, the related uh, software and systems, they provide 4.5 million jobs in the US right now and growing. 
So it's an exciting set of projects, and you know we hope to come back in a few months and start talking about storage. And Colonel Johnson kind of missed the completion date. We really went for a completion date of Bob Marshall's birthday, which is today. <laughs> Marshall, please come up to cut the ribbon. Thank you for attending the Sierra Army Depot Solar Array Ribbon Cutting Ceremony.